Books will always exist. Will they be what they are now? Absolutely, they will not. My crystal ball is clear enough to see that the days of Borders, Barnes & Noble, uh, the chain bookstores, they're limited. I like Michael Connolly. I think he's a terrific storyteller. Um, I like Sarah Waters, uh, Pat Barker. I'm reading Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. That's terrific. Um, I read across a wide span. There are a lot of, a lot of people that I like. You know, I have a routine because I think that writing is self-hypnosis and you fall into a, uh, uh, a kind of a trance if you do the same passes um, over and over. So I'll get up, uh, have some breakfast with my wife, uh, watch CNN, and then I'll make my pot of tea and sit down and write for about three and a half hours. I'm a community guy, um, family guy. Family is the most important thing, more important than the work, certainly. But, And I think a lot of readers wouldn't be all that surprised. They sense it in my my work. I'm just, just a guy. A book is a fine thing to have in your hand and turn the pages on a summer day, but so is a Kindle. And if I'm in the car, I can listen to a book on audio. And you have to teach yourself to appreciate every one of those forms. It changes. But when the doomsayers say, oh, this is going to kill the book, no. The book is not the important part. The book is the delivery system. The important part is the story and the talent. There are drawbacks to the e-book, and there's no question about that. They're ephemeral. An e-book exists as, as boops and beeps on the inside of the machine. It's not anything you can put on a shelf when you're done with it. Uh, it's not as easy to search for things looking back in a book as it is with a book because it doesn't have the same texture. Also, here's another thing. If you drop a book in the toilet, you can fish it out and dry it off and read it. If you drop your Kindle in the toilet, you're done.